shake hands with one or two people and say good evening, God bless you. And then you may please be seated. I want to thank the Almighty God for the grace for us to gather again this year. And I'm believing God that if Jesus tarries, I will see you again next year. This year, we have a very important theme. Oh. I, I hope you are all hearing me. Why don't you bring your own microphone, the one you use? Okay, can you hear me? Some people are still not hearing. If you are not hearing, clap. How <laughs> did you do the what I asked you to do if you are not here? I'm believing God that by this time next year, the crowd will fill this auditorium. But very briefly, let's go to the book of Joel. Chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 23. I'm sure before I finish reading, you will all be hearing. Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. has given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts are eating. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. People shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I'm in the midst of Israel, and that I'm the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Today we want to talk very briefly about the rain. Uh, When we talk about the rain, the first thing you think about is refreshing. When 
the weather had been very hot, and suddenly the rain falls. Uh, everybody feels cool. I mean, for example, during the last Congress, when the heat became almost unbearable, I spoke to my daddy. Uh, daddy, we need heavenly air conditioning. And the rain fell in December. And it cooled down everything. So may, may I start by prophesying to someone that every abnormal heat in your life will be gone today. And you know that one of the greatest sources, uh, one of the greatest sources of fresh water is the rain. When it rains, the rivers flow, and we get fresh water. But probably the most important uh, benefit of the rain is to be found in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. Isaiah 55 verse 10, the Almighty God was talking about the rain, and he says, it is the rain that enables the earth to bring seed for the sower and food for the eater. He tells you straight away that the greatest opponent of famine is the rain. When it rains, there will be food to eat, there will be seeds to plant, so that the following year, there will still be food to eat. And then he says in Amos chapter 4, you can read it from verse 7. He says, Amos chapter 4, reading from verse 7. He says, when he's angry with the people, it will rain on one city and keep the other city dry. And then the city that had rain will have food and will have water. The rain that have, the city that has no rain, no food, no water. And then those who lack rain will not have to go to those who have rain to get food and to get water. I'm prophesying to someone tonight, before this time next year, your colleagues will be coming to you for food. They'll be coming to you for refreshment. You know, in every family, there is somebody they call the go-to person. Somebody you go to when you have a problem. Somebody you go to when you have a need. I decree that in your family, you will be the go-to person. Now, I don't want to give a long lecture because I'm sure they've got mighty preachers lined up to talk to you about that. But there are all kinds of rains because the theme is not a rain, the theme is the rain. The rain means that there can be more than one rain. And there's a particular rain you're talking about. You see, because when God was angry with Sodom and Gomorrah, he rained brimstone and fire upon them. That's also a rain. 
We're talking about the kind of rain that brings blessing. You know, the Bible talks about showers of blessings. So, just like I prayed at the beginning, before you leave this place, you'll be drenched with the showers of blessings. The only thing I want to emphasize tonight, because without any doubt, rain is going to fall. And it's going to fall abundantly. Is that how much rain that a person can soak in is determined by how dry that person is. When the rain falls, any part of the ground that is not tested, the rain will just fall and then flow off. But when a piece of land is tested and the rain comes, we will grab the rain and soak it in. I will tell you just one story, and then you it will be time for you to pray. You see, because when you read Acts chapter 6, you can read it from verse 1 downwards. The Bible tells us that when the work of God began to expand, and there were problems about distribution of materials, Somebody brought a suggestion that uh, they should appoint some people who will be helping with the distribution of food. And then the Bible said they chose seven people. And they mentioned certain names. One of the names they mentioned was Stephen. Then they said, a man full of the Holy Spirit and power. <laughs> now you may just read that one and gloss over it. You are not hearing. Ah. This is the most crucial aspect of this meeting, so you better. If you can't hear, move. can't afford not to hear what I'm about to say. So if you are not hearing, move. I'm willing to wait two minutes for you to move. Are you hearing now? I say if you are not hearing, move. I can't see any sign of movement. That means we must be here. They said they found a man called Stephen, full of Holy Ghost and power. I said, You can read that one and just gloss over it. But the heart of a mathematician in me asks a question What do you mean? On the day of Pentecost, they were all filled. Everybody was full. So how come now you are talking about a man full of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and then I got the understanding. There is full and there is full. Fool differs from fool. The tire of a car 
is full of air. But the amount of air you put in the tire of a car is not the same that you put into the tire of an aeroplane. The tire of a car is about to carry just a small car that will carry maybe about five people. The tire of a plane is about to carry a giant carrying at times as many as 500 people traveling at an extraordinarily great speed and from my little knowledge of mathematics I know that there is something called kinetic energy which is a multiplication of the weight and the square of the speed with which that thing is traveling. And when I calculate the kinetic energy of a 747 traveling at a speed of about 500 kilometers per hour, landing, The force with which it lands is it's not like uh, a, a car just uh, traveling on the road. And yet, when that massive plane lands, it lands on tires. A tire bumps up and down and says to the plane, is that all you can do? There's a difference between fool and fool. There's a difference between soaking in the rain casually and soaking it in that even in a crowd, they will pick you out, just like they picked out Stephen. A friend of mine phoned me last night. We are about the same age. Why are you calling me so late? I just want to ask you a question. Where do you get all this strength from? He said, because I've been following you. You've just finished the Congress. Then you go this fishing thing you say you are doing. Up and down, up and down. Coming down, preaching, laying hands on the people. And you are still bouncing. my father to release the rain. How much of it you soak in is up to you. Stand on your feet. I will pray a very simple prayer for you. And then you will pray for yourself. Or maybe we should do it the other way. Maybe first you pray and cry to the everlasting Father. I say, everlasting Father, soak me in your ear. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. I'm not asking for a treason, Lord. I'm asking that you will soak me in your head. 